Good morning. Good morning, my friends, and welcome to A Sanctuary in the World. I am the Reverend Toya Richards, and I'm coming to you from this virtual space where we look at um, the intersection between faith and life. Uh, each week that we gather, I come to you in a different location, which serves as the backdrop for us to think about and examine um, what we believe, what we value, and how those uh, values and our faith connect up with real life the things that we're dealing with out in, out in the world. And so today, um, I am joining you from Pilgrim Baptist Church in St. Paul, Minnesota at their community gardens. This is a community space where people can um, uh, get a plot, they can make it their own, plant, plant whatever they wish to plant, and then tend to that garden space and, and watch it grow. This is my garden space. Um, and there are a number of things that I'm attempting to plant here. Um, I'm a novice at this, but I'm excited about it. I've got some parsley over here that's growing. I've got some greens here, uh, some cucumbers over there. Got some uh, eggplant right here, as you see. Uh, what is this, basil growing right here. Uh, what else do I have? I have some more greens. And I think that's uh, turnip greens going right here. Uh, tomatoes, what garden, um, no, no garden is, is complete without some tomatoes here, and then some bell peppers growing. Um, I, as I said, I'm excited to keep coming back here and, and watching the growth, the newness come back uh, as the, the people have planted. What's significant about this garden and, and, and uh, Pilgrim Baptist Church is that it sits in a neighborhood called Rondo. Rondo is, is a very um, uh, important neighborhood in the city of St. Paul. Rondo for many, many years was, and actually still is, the hub of African-American life in this community. It was a vibrant, vibrant community full of all kinds of, of cultural and social and economic um, systems for African-American people here. Uh, playwright August Wilson actually lived in this neighborhood among, uh, among the people as well as many others who poured into this community. Unfortunately, Rondo was, uh, 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 was affected in a negative way. Um, in the mid-50s, uh, the interstate was built, Interstate 94, and uh, the powers that be built the interstate directly through the Rondo neighborhood and it split the neighborhood. It, it broke the neighborhood, if you will. There's still remnants of that brokenness in this neighborhood. This very land, once you start digging in it, you find, uh, you find leftovers from homes that were removed. You find all kinds of things. Um, and then the people are still mourning the loss of what was their neighborhood. And so this is, uh, this is our backdrop today as we talk a little bit about brokenness and how we repair the brokenness. Brokenness is everywhere. There's brokenness in, in our families, there's brokenness in ourselves, brokenness in our communities, in our nation, and, and in the whole world there is, uh, there is brokenness. But I believe, my faith, what I value tells me though that there is the possibility of healing from brokenness. There's the possibility of restoration, of being repaired from brokenness. And so um, that's how I, uh, that, that's, what, that's what I cling to as I deal with all kinds of things that are fractured. Um, I wanna just share a word for, from my textbook called The Bible that speaks a little bit to how we overcome, how we get what we need, how we move from a place of, of being disenfranchised or broken, if you will, to a place of, of wholeness and healing, what, it, what, what that looks like. The book of Isaiah is all about uh, the children of Israel who had been in exile um, in, in a foreign land and their, their release from that exile, they're moving from that bondage into a place of wholeness and healing and revival. And so the book of Isaiah is all about that and it gives us um, it gives us some guides for how do we get to that place um, where we are restored. Isaiah 58 verses 9 through 12 is what I want to lift up for your hearing. Um, this is really a, a passage that talks a lot about how you worship, 
but I want to lift up verses 9 through 12. Listen, if you will, to the word. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong and you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall rise, shall raise up the foundations of many generations you shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. You shall be called repairer of the breach, repairers of the breach. My friends, that's what I think we are called to be, repairers, repairers of the breach. Repairers of the breach, not those stuck, not those stuck in the past, not those stuck in what someone did to us or what someone did to our communities, what someone did to our people, what's, what, what, what harm has been done. Yes, those things did happen, but we are not to stay there. We are to be those who build up, who are restorers of the breach. And so I challenge you, I challenge you to think about what is broken? What is broken in your life? What is broken in you? What is broken in your community? What is broken in this world that calls and requires for requires uh, repairing, that needs repairing? And how can you be a repairer of that breach? How can you stand in the gap and repair? My friends, I believe that there's a multiplicity of ways. You've got to figure that out for you, what it means to be a repairer, what it means to be a healer, a one who restores. You've got to sit and discern for yourself what that means as it relates to your own faith and what you believe. My faith tells me though that when I engage in that repairing work, when I engage in that restoring work, I'm told clearly, in verse 11, the Lord will guide you continually. I'm not alone in that process. I'm not alone in being a repairer of the breach. I have help. That's what my faith tells me. And then my friends, once we do that work, once we begin to do that work, once we begin to be a repairer of the breach, to recognize what needs to be healed, restored, then the action piece, is to continually tend to that restoration. This very garden uh, is at its best. These plants are able to rise up when the weeds are pulled from around it. And so every couple of days, I come to this place to pull up the weeds, to tend to the garden, so that this new life in this soil that was broken amid this community that's been broken, it can have an opportunity to thrive. And so that's the continued action. That's, the, that's the, the hands and feet piece to this work that we're doing as repairs of the breach. I'm excited about that. In the midst of the brokenness, I know there's hope for me. My faith system tells me there's hope in the midst of the brokenness. And I'm going to be working. I'm going to be thinking a lot about the spaces and places that need to be repaired. My role in that rep in that repairing work and then my continual tending to those spaces and places in me and in my community and in my everything I touch that needs to be repaired. That's my prayer for myself and it's also my prayer for you. Let it be so my friends. Well that's all I've got this week in a sanctuary in the world. I hope you've heard something that um, that will prompt you to think, that will prompt you to then act, something that will encourage you in your own journey. Um, I invite you, as I always do, to learn more about this 
uh, social um, social enterprise through my my website grace multimedia www.gracemultimedia.org um, there's a lot of additional information there um, including a new page I've created around around dismantling racism um, there's also space there there are two ways that you can donate to this uh, a social enterprise there's a place where you can give via cash app as well as a place where you can give via PayPal I want to thank those who've already given uh, I want to give a shout out to Yolanda and Darnell Ferris who uh, who gave generously um, a, a donation for this social enterprise and I also want to give a shout out to Aliska Albuston who's recently given as well via cash app thank you the work that you the way in which you're sewing into this enterprise um, will enable me to keep doing it uh, buy equipment um, get sound get, get make the sound better um, uh, perhaps get something that will help so that um, so that uh, it's more smoothly uh, communicated so those are the kinds of things that your donation will go toward as we do this work well again thank you um, have a great great week and I'll see you next time in a sanctuary in the world. Be blessed.